In today's Madden 22 tip, we're going to be breaking down one of my favorite little route combinations uh, in the game. It actually comes out of our Air Raid offense. Now, if you're new to the channel um, and you have not already picked up the Air Raid offensive guide, I just want to let you know that you can actually get access to that by joining my Patreon membership, which is only $10 a month. And the cool part about the membership is it doesn't only unlock the spread ebook, but it's actually going to unlock all 15 of my Madden 22 offensive and defensive ebooks. So if you want to check that out, I'm going to put a link to that in the description of the video. And again, you can sign up for that for just $10 a month. It unlocks everything uh, over there. Now, what I want to talk about in this video is, like I said, my favorite route combination in Madden 22. I actually think it's probably my favorite route combination in general uh, for a lot of different reasons. Okay, um, This is a route combination that is going to stretch the defense horizontally and vertically, um, but primarily horizontally. It's actually the mesh wheel, uh, which I'm going to get into in just a second. Now, I do this out of the play curl wheel out of the spread Y slot. You can do this out of other plays. It can do it out of the formations but I do love to play curl wheel. I think that it's probably the best suited concept uh, to run this out of. And again, I'm in the Arizona Cardinals playbook. We have a full air raid ebook available at our Patreon. If you wanna check that out, like I said, you can sign up at the link down below. Okay guys, so let's talk about this little curl wheel play. What makes this play tick, and if you actually think about the play mesh post uh, from the air raid offense, what makes that play so good is not necessarily that it's a super complex route combination. What makes the play so good is that we're going to take this cornerback on the outside and we're going to try to isolate him by taking this drag and kind of having something that they have to draw attention to underneath, using a wheel to pull all of the flat zones out of the way. And what you're going to notice here is this post should be really good over the middle for you. Okay, it's kind of your number one target. And if it's open, it's open. If it's not, you're going to get rid of it and go to somebody else. Now, the setup for this is actually really simple. We're going to flat the outside receiver. Ideally, you're on the right hash for this play. So if you're on the other side of the field, you can just flip the play if you want to. But we want it, we want our wide side of the field to be to the left side because it's going to help our wheel route. It's going to help our drag and flat concept as well. So we're going to drag the outside receiver. We're going to flat the inside slot on the left side. We're going to wheel the running back, and we're going to drag the tight end. And this is a five-out setup. So if they send pressure, we'll talk about that in just a second. But first and foremost, let's just talk about your first read is always your running back. If you can, the wheel route is is really really good this year. Now in the true in the true air raid, they're actually going to read this from the post to the running back. So you can kind of peek the post and then work back down to the running back if you want to. Um, but basically, you're essentially getting a high low on the flat defender. If they don't have a hard flat on the field then this wheel for a low pass is going to be wide open. It's an automatic five yards. It's basically free. Now, the cool part about the wheel route, especially out of when you're running a spread offense this year, is if you wait on him to cut up, you can actually cut this ball off in front of the linebacker. So the beauty of this is you're going to force the opponent to have to respect your running back wheel every single time that they're on the field. Where this allows you a lot of freedom is let's say that they go to a hard flat style of approach. Well, if they go to a hard flat style approach, which they probably will, um, you're going to notice a couple things. So first thing you're going to see here is that this post route, our first read, now the, sh the coverage comes underneath and we're able to kind of throw that in a window. Now right there, they did have a yellow zone. So let me run that back one more time. Um, and ideally this drag will kind of pull that yellow zone. So you want to be kind of early here. You want to throw it kind of right in there and as you can see it gets wide open that's in a situation where they have a cover four with a hard flat now what about a cover three so let's say they go to cover three coverage and they have a hard flat as well okay so they're going to have their their coverage is underneath they're trying to kind of get down on the wheel well now if you take a look here same kind of thing when he cuts in but notice that that yellow zone defender is there so if you see a yellow zone defender there you can't go to that read obviously but what you can do, and this is where this um, offense really becomes lethal, is let's say they go cover three hard flat, which I think is one of the better ways to play this. Um, what you're going to be able to do is you can low ball the wheel, first and foremost. So that's an easy, safe read that you can consistently work, and they're going to have to respect you. The other thing that is really cool about uh, cover three, especially if they have hard flats, is if you take a look, you're going to come back here to your mesh, 
And what you'll notice is you, one of your drags will typically be wide open. And to be honest with you, the reality is they're probably not going to run a cover three shaded down like that. The yellow zones are going to be you know a little bit more easily manipulated but if they do that when the post comes across the middle you can throw that and just cut it off as you can see right there now what most people do whenever they run cover three especially if they're running a cover three um, against a gun spread type of look is they're going to run something like this they're going to have this guy in the middle of the field and he's probably going to honestly take away the the post but then you have all kinds of other stuff over the middle right because now you have your two drags and you have your wheel. So this is kind of a double Mabel concept. First and foremost, I just want to point out, and of course I threw that just a split second way. I actually threw that way too early. But once the wheel gets inside leverage, once the wheel gets inside leverage, that's when you're going to want to try to hit that read. Okay. The problem for the defense is going to become that they're going to have to devote so much resources to guarding the wheel route and the post that now your mesh is gonna be wide open over the middle. As you can see right here, we just take the mesh and you see how good that this route combo can be. So what they have to do to stop the mesh is they have to actually go ahead and have two vertical hooks that are shaded down. So we're gonna go two vert hooks, shaded down. We're gonna go with the clouds on the outside and then we're gonna man this guy up to guard the post. This is kind of a general idea as to like what they're gonna to have to do to be able to, to guard this. So they have to have really heavy middle of the field coverage with those underneath zones. The problem, however, is gonna become, again, if you follow this post all the way across, you can actually throw this on the sideline just like this. Now, of course, if they're usering the route, that's one thing. If you notice that they are usering the route, what you wanna do here, so if you say, well, I know he's gonna sit in the middle and he's gonna take that post every single time. Well, what you want to be able to do off of this is you want to be able, first and foremost, to hit your wheel. But let's just say, assume that they do have coverage on the wheel. I want you to watch this real quick. You're going to notice that right over the middle, this second drag is going to get wide open because that vert hook, even though it's technically shaded down, has to kind of be pulled with the um, with the yellow zone, or not with the yellow zone, but with the, with the post route. So this becomes a really dynamic cover two beater, cover three beater, cover four beater. It's also one of the best band beaters in the, in the game. But notice how these yellows will eventually pass these things underneath. And what we're going to do is put the user in conflict. And the user is going to have to choose. Am I, gonna, am I going to guard the mesh or am I going to guard the post? And that's really the choice. Also, the wheel, though. And you have to remember the wheel is kind of your secret bread and butter. This low ball right there is an easy check down for you consistently regardless of the coverage that you're going to be facing now let's take a second here and talk a little bit about man to man so if they want to run some man coverage um, this is what you're going to look for really the biggest thing with this is it's the same exact progression so you're looking here no i can't hit there now i can low ball as you can see look how good that wheel is you can what you want to do with wheels is you want to consistently and i mean consistently low ball the wheel pass lead inside low ball the wheel you'll find a lot more success than if you try other tactics one of the things you'll notice also on these wheels though is you're going to go right into these drags and you see how you can low ball the drags pretty easily um, against press man oftentimes they'll run into each other which is a real massive advantage we have to kind of assume that they're going to use with the skinny post over the middle um, if you want to you can slant but I like to just do the double drags. Typically, they work just fine. See how they run into each other. And then I can just check down right there for an easy 5 to 10 yards. And really, this if you're getting consistently 5 to 10, that's what makes this concept so good. And this concept is really designed um, you know, to force them to have to come underneath on the drag. If they're not going to come underneath on the drag and they're not going to worry about your wheel, then you can just take that all day long. However, what's going to happen is they're going to have to start coming down on those things. So you're going to see adjustments like the Mike Blitz Zero with um, you know, something that looks like this heavy underneath coverage. And then what's going to happen from the offensive perspective is now your post is going to be isolated one-on-one, -on -one, so you can easily just throw it an aggressive catch. The beauty of this play is that the aggressive catch will uh, pretty much make it that diving catch animation regardless of what they do. So this is one of my favorite, I mean, it's probably my favorite passing concept of all time in Madden. I think it's, it's every bit as good this year as it's been in years past. And um, I actually think it's actually a lot better because the wheel route to the running back is so powerful. It's like the ultimate check down alongside of, you know, really, really good underneath concepts. They're gonna have to put a lot of resources underneath 
which is then going to allow you to throw over the top. So I want to thank you for watching this video. If you want to learn the rest of the Air Raid offense, join the Patreon. There will be a link in the description below where you can join the Patreon for just $10 a month. The beauty of the Patreon is it doesn't only give you access to one ebook. It actually unlocks every Madden 22 offensive and defensive guide that I've created up till this point. That's been 15 ebooks, but we do have more coming. It also, as long as your subscription is active, as long as you're still a member, it will give you access to any additional updates or any new offensive and defensive guides that I release in the future. And we pretty much typically update the Patreon two to four times a week with either new content or new eBooks or new materials. So if you want to join the Patreon, I think it's a great investment. It's going to help you literally overnight become a better Madden player. And if you want to join that, all you have to do is go down to the description of the video and click the link that I put down there. Thanks for watching the video, and if you want to check out the Patreon, again, there is a link to sign up for that in the description of this video.